Hey gang, we are in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. And we are at the Scottsdale, well, it's the Scottsdale Airport out of Phoenix, northeast side of Phoenix. So, thought I would come here to show you a location, something that's very intriguing to me. It's a cemetery of sorts, a cemetery of frozen bodies. The name of the place is called Alcor, Alcor Life Extension Foundation, I think it's called. And I came here about a week ago. And the reason I came is I'm, I'm intrigued with it to show you and the whole concept, but I'm also actually, uh, I was intrigued to hear about maybe it's something I will do someday. You know, I'm very analytical, scientific, and eh, some validity to it. So I came here to learn more, and when I came, there was only uh, basically one person there who's the office manager. Her name was, is Ashley, really nice woman. Ashley's awesome. And I said, when I literally came to the front door, I said, hey, I am first and foremost a documentary film, if you will, historian. And I want to come here and do a piece on this facility. But secondly, I am someone who has, is curious and interested and hey, I could end up being a customer, don't know. She was very nice and she gave me a full tour. And the idea was for me was to come back after that, I wasn't really expecting a tour, but she was gracious enough to show me around. It was amazing. And she gave me the card of James and Margie, who are the co-CEOs and presidents, and said, yeah, come back, email them. I did email them, but I never heard back, which tells me they probably looked at my channel and said, hmm, face of the forgotten. Either uh, for whatever reason, they don't want me to do a piece on them. So. That's okay. I will still do uh, cover the story. There's a lot of pictures on the internet that we can, I can insert and we can look at. And I can tell you what my, my mind's eye, everything that I saw, which was fascinating. But I really started to think after I walked through of the probable end game options, outcomes of what this could be, you know, from our experience at all the cemeteries and what's, well, we'll get into that, but let me, let me just first, you know, well, it's right up ahead. Let's walk there. And I'll tell you a little bit about what I saw. So when I first walked in, I saw a wall of fame, so to speak, a wall of a lot of, they call them patients. And there were pictures and names of the various people that are frozen. Now there are, I think as of today, 222 people that are frozen in there. They call them patients. And some are heads only and some are full bodies. And there are, I think about 1500 people on the waiting list and those are members and you join join a membership. You pay a couple hundred dollars, I think it's a grand or two a year. And the idea is that you get a, a life insurance policy because who's gonna drop 80, it's like 100 grand for your head, maybe 90 grand, and then almost 200 grand for your full body. Like who's gonna drop that? But the, what you do is you become a member and then you get a life insurance policy. And they're the, the beneficiaries. Yeah, it makes sense. It can work, right? You know, so maybe not everybody can do it, but a lot of people can do it. 
So I saw the wall and a lot of interesting people. There's a little Asian girl, I forget her name. I think she was three years old. She had a brain disease or brain something. I think it was Thailand, and incurable. Her parents were doctors and they had her brought here. And she's in there and okay, so she was explaining a lot. Ashley was explaining a lot. And then we went into a room. It's kind of like a prep room. It's like a demo room that's in there that has, and she gave me the model, a 3D printer, 4D printer, not 3D, 3D, 4D. You know, they made they make plastic models for you that have the innards of what these containers that contain the, the bodies, the patients. And it's basically a cylinder. And in the cylinder are these things that they drop in. One in the middle is for the heads, and the heads go in buckets in these modules, in these compartments, and then surrounding them, flanking them in circumference is, or radius is the, the full bodies. Everybody's upside down because they're in nitrogen and nitrogen evaporates up and they're constantly filling them. And the most dangerous place, I guess, where there was some disaster or something that happened that they couldn't be managed, that the last place that would evaporate out would be at the bottom where your head would be, which is the most important part, the neuro part, right? Preserving your brain. So, they put the bodies in like, looks like North Face sleeping bags. And then they, I mean, they cool you down, you die. And the whole idea is that, you know, they know ahead of time they get to your body once you're pronounced clinically dead. And then they can get your body and cool it down as rapidly as possible. And that's the idea. So I did see, I, I, she took me back to the room and I saw the, gra I'm gonna call it the graveyard. <laughs> and it's all these vertical canisters, massive on giant casters filled with nitrogen. And they're all just sitting there frozen, waiting for the day that medical science is going to catch up and revive you. Now, the problem with that they seem to have, they say they have overcome, is that, you know, when you freeze anything, it destroys, it crystallizes the cells. We're 60% water, so it destroys the cells. So, especially your brain, the whole idea is to preserve your brain, your essence. So they've come up with like an antifreeze that they inject. They take out all your blood, as much, fluid as they can and that's one of the problems I see is if we're 60% water how do you get rid of all the fluid but they have like an antifreeze and then they bring you down to somewhere around 200 degrees centigrade Celsius below which is like I don't know what that is but it's some ridiculous number in the liquid nitrogen and instead of crystallizing you're turning into basically a block of glass now the challenge is, and they've, they've done many experiments with, with trying to freeze and then thaw like brains, for example, and they've, the brain shrinks. They've not been able to do it. Again, future science. But what they have, I understand, been able to do, because if you just have your head done, the idea that makes sense is that who wants your body? You're 80 years old, you die. You just want your brain, your head. Your head is maybe the vessel. You're not gonna operate, take the brain out. So you just take the head and freeze it. And that they can clone or grow a body for you. I understand they're doing that with rats and now even they're experimenting with monkeys. I think they've done it successfully with many, many rats. I didn't know that. So that is conceivable. Is conceivable. So here is the facility up here, and yeah, they say that the famous baseball player Ted Williams is here. 
Ashley said she can't talk about that. Everything's pretty much confidential on that, but I think everybody knows that. From what I understand, Ted Williams was, wanted to be cremated, and then his family, after he died, decided to do what they wanted to do, and it was just his head, so his head is in there frozen in Alcor. So there's gonna be a lot of construction here. They're basically putting these turnarounds in this whole neighborhood on all the streets. These, you know, instead of stoplights, you have these roundabouts, I think they're called, right? A lot of engineering companies here. So yeah, so this is, this is Alcor. They're closed. It's a Saturday. We're not gonna get the tour, so I thought I would come over here on a quiet day and just walk down the sidewalk. And now I'm standing here, let's, let's, uh, let's walk down there and get a closer look at the building. Now the building architecturally is just a normal office building. There's nothing special about it. Why here? Why in Scottsdale? Well, I think there's three reasons. One, politics. They, they started out in California and they wanted, not politics, they wanted to get out of there, obviously. Number two, crime. Another reason to get out of California. There's, by comparison, I think a lot less crime here. Tell me if I'm wrong. I just moved here. And third is the, you know, earthquakes. There's really not a lot of natural, if any, disasters that happen here. So that's the front door when you come in and that's why they're here. Now, they told me that, interestingly, that, or she, uh, Ashley told me that, interestingly, that, you know, if there's, if people are like, what if you lose power? Well, they have emergency generators, but the emergency generators are really more focused on the computers because the nitrogen tanks with the bodies, they're, you don't need electricity. You just need to fill them every, about once a week, you kind of top them off. And I think, I think she said it would take two or three months for it to really evaporate out. So we'd really be in trouble. 222 frozen, frozen folks in here. And the whole idea is even if they're all over the world, they will come and get you. She told me that it takes about up to as long as 18 hours before the body starts to really decay. I didn't know that. I thought it was immediate to where it wouldn't be useful for you. But who knows? Who really knows what's going on? So if you were to open that door right there or one of these doors, this is where the, it's where they all go in. And that's kind of the story, guys. Now, the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, like, what is the, where is this all, where do you think this is going? So, again, there's been a lot of studies and, and experts. You know, you don't see Carl Sagan in here. You don't see S S Stephen Hawking's when he died. He's not here. So, obviously, they don't think it's feasible and they talk about freezing the brain and bringing it back and your memories and your retention and the connections. Even if it was, it would be, you'd come out, you know, five, I, I don't think it's a hundred years from now. I think it would be about 500 years from now, maybe a thousand. And none of your friends are gonna be around. Nobody's gonna be around. And you're gonna be a, a real stranger, but. 
would those things be preserved? Would it be you? They clone the body. They could probably clone a head and put your head in that body. Is that really going to be you? Or is it going to be a simulation? Hard to say, but you know, the way I look at it is if you get cremated, you have zero chance. You get buried, you have zero chance because the body is getting destroyed. But if you do this, maybe you have some chance. One out of 10, one out of 100, one out of 1,000. But I really ask myself, you know, really, what is the probable end game here? You know, that is one option. And you, if you guys know me, I take things like, I'll say 11 steps ahead. I always like think way. And if I, I were to take this out, the, there is another option, you know, and, and many people say, what if they go bankrupt? And who owns the bodies? Well, doesn't the family own the bodies? I forgot to ask Ashley that, but I would guess the families can claim the bodies and then have them buried. I mean, or if there's a disaster or who knows what, I mean, I really think that, you know, a big option you have to look at it is that the place is going to go bankrupt because like cemeteries, they're reliant on future. Future members. It's like future graves. That's the income, the pyramid scheme, if you will, of a cemetery where when they run out of space, they're not getting funding anymore because they've spent all that money and then they go bankrupt and then you know what happens. The desecrators come. You've seen some of those mausoleums and they pull the bones out. And the worst would be, the worst scenario would be the Satan worshipers come and they're having rituals with your body or Another direction I'll go that maybe isn't as bad, but a, a, a possible outcome to all this. And I want you guys to all think, because we're gonna do a survey on this, is do you think that this is going to keep going forever or till the day medical science catches up? Or do you think it's gonna end badly with bankruptcy or disaster? 50 years from now, they've been in business 50 years. Will they last another 50 years? And I, I look at a couple things. Here's how I think. I think that 50 or 100 years from now, when medical science does catch up, there's a decent chance that they say, that's all a waste. Even with the science, you bring them back, they can't be revived. Then what happens, Step number two or three is you run out of members. Nobody's going to sign up if medical science does say, yeah, now we know we, <laughs> this is worthless. It's like the first guy they put in here. The, before this whole foundation was started, they put in a guy who built his own tank and he was frozen and he did a quick freeze. He's probably crystallized, but he's in there. What happens then? Then you go bankrupt. Then the facility goes for sale. Do they lease? They probably lease space here. They might own it. It's an office complex. Can't pay rent, can't pay mortgage, can't pay taxes, even if you own it. What happens then? Well, I, I don't think, I don't think the, the, the doors are broken into and vandals come. I think that knowing ahead of time that's all going down the tubes, if it were to go down the tubes, that they would auction if the families don't want the bodies. And, and think about this. How many times have we gone to the old cemeteries and after three generations, they're forgotten? Not all, but 90%. Call it 80%, call it 50% if you want. The families don't care, they don't remember. The great, great, great grandchildren or even greater so what happens to the bodies if the families don't claim and bury or cremate them? I think that a viable option is it's all about money is they get auctioned. Now remember something, in the 1800s guys, it wasn't like today. It was completely different. What you thought was morbid then 
is not morbid today. And what we think is morbid today is not going, it's gonna be completely different 100 years from now. But you have the Mutter Museum. I think they're gonna bid for Ted Williams' head. And they're gonna be competing for Ted Williams' head with the Baseball Hall of Fame because the Baseball Hall of Fame is gonna to wanna to get his head. And the family descendants will be involved because they can get a lot of money for his head from the Baseball Hall of Fame. And then maybe they'll stick him on a mannequin in a frozen chamber uh, with his uniform and say, here, come see Ted Williams. Again, ridiculous. Today, yes. A hundred years from now, no. What about the Mutter Museum? They're gonna be going for some of the bodies. They're, it's it's gonna be the highest bidder. And there are museums, that's the Oddity Museum in Pennsylvania. What about a hundred years from now, what's gonna be valid for museums? All kinds of different stuff. Or there's gonna be Ripley's, believe it or not, or Oddity Museums. But people are gonna buy these bodies. Hey, you know what? They'll probably, they could be in somebody's private home as a collectible, like antiques. Hey, let's have a smoke, let's have a martini, come in the back and see Frozen John. I got his head. And they'll pull a little curtain and there'll be his head. So that's a possible outcome. It's kind of frightening, but I will go back to it and say, if you don't take a chance, and do this, what chance do you have to come back if, and, and again, if this is, these are for people who don't believe in the afterlife. All of you out there, Christians and everybody that's religious. By the way, there are a couple of Catholic people on this list that are practicing Catholics. That I know, I was told that. But beyond that, this is more for scientists, atheists, right? I don't know, but I really wonder, so as I ponder for myself, and I'll just conclude it this way, is if I were to do this, I would have a chance of coming back someday because I don't want to die. Who wants to die? And I think when you go into a coma or you are put under anesthetic, it's like there's no time in between. It will probably be the same way. When you die, you're going to wake up right away 500 years from now. But the alternative is, if they were to have my head in a mutter museum 500 years from now, hey, that's Ron Carlson. He was a curious guy. Check out his head. This is who he was. I don't think that's so bad. Now, I'm not obsessed with not being forgotten, but Anyway, I wouldn't mind being an oddity in a museum. I guess that's what I'm saying. So, I'm gonna put a survey out, maybe tomorrow, maybe, well, whenever this video runs. And I'm gonna ask you which way you think it's going. And I will bet, I think I know what the most of the answers are going to be, but I wanna hear from you. All right, let's go. See you on the next one. Maybe I'll see you in 500 years.